Did it happen to you that you received an email from people impersonating your domain or your email address? Well, you probably uh, you're probably not using uh, SPF, which is Sender Framework Policy. So, what is the Sender Framework Policy? Actually, it's a security mechanism created to prevent the hackers from sending emails on your behalf or using your domain name. Uh, the communication mainly is about the, uh, the mechanism is about communication between the DNS servers, the sender and the receiver DNS servers. They will establish a communication and they will ask about the SPF records. So let's say in this example that Alice is sending an email to Bob, the, the trivial, or the, 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 the usual names, Alice and Bob, right? So Alice is sending an email to Bob. Now, uh, how does the communication look like if there is no sender framework policy defined on Alice's server? So uh, Alice's server will say, hello, Bob, I've got a new message from Alice to Bob. Now, Bob's server will say, hello, Alice server, what is your SPF? Now, Alice's server doesn't have SPF defined on the DNS record. She will tell him, I don't have, who cares? Trust me, it's from Alice to Bob. Now, Bob's server, which is this one, will tell Alice's server, look, if you don't have SPF record, I cannot be sure that Alice is sending the email to Bob. Now, Alice DNS server will answer that I don't have the list of Alice's allowed IP addresses. So the sender frame policy here is the list of allowed IP addresses that can send email on behalf of Alice or Alice domain. So Bob's server will say that okay delivery denied sorry so the message will not reach bob right so let's take the other the other scenario here spf is defined alice has spf records defined on her dns so alice is mentioning the list of allowed ip services that can send email on her behalf and only those ip addresses defined so when Bob's server receives the message from Alice's server, he will ask for the SPF record. And now uh, Alice's server will provide the SPF record or the list of IPs. Now Bob's uh, server will see, okay, uh, the message you have for me is sent from a certain IP. So let me check if this is, this IP is, is defined in the SPF record and it will match. So once there is a match between the IP and the list of IPs in the SPF record, Bob's DNS server will relay the message or forward the message to Bob and the delivery will take place. So why do we need to to define the SPF record. Sometimes you have lots of applications sending emails on your behalf, such as Help Scout or even Google, that are uh, not using your SMTP servers, so you just make sure to uh, include their IPs in the SPF record, okay? So how to check for SPF record? Let me see, let me go here. I have a domain called uh, Metaform uh, CRM. Go to MX Toolbox then go to the SPF record tool and make sure to uh, write your domain here and look up look up the SPF record. Now in this domain, uh, I have configured the SPF. So uh, the version, this is, this is uh, uh, the way it is formatted by the way. This is very, very simple. It can be very complex when you have many IPs and many uh, applications to whitelist. So V SPF1, obviously the version SPF1, and then the IP to whitelist. Sometimes you need as well to uh, use the command include, such as uh, include underscore spf.google.com, uh, then all. So it will whitelist or it will include all the authenticated servers from Google. 
uh, let me go here let me show you directly on the server this is the actual server of metafarm in the dns server here is the spf one configured it's a very simple and straightforward thing to do just to include the list of ips here you want to allow sending emails on your behalf